like I say, it's very early in the financial year, so it's yeah. Okay, great, Russell, come on up. Do you want to talk us through the financial report? Uh, thanks very much, Mr. Chair, and good morning, um, everyone. Yes, yeah, Peter said, and uh, reiterated by the chair, very early in the year, so we're not seeing from a financial perspective. Uh, so this is for the year, for the period ended um, August, so two months into the year. We're not seeing much of a movement from from budget at this stage. In saying that, uh, we're operating at a, about a three point uh, one million dollars um, uh, surplus for the year to date. Uh, that's uh, a couple of areas in that. One is uh, a higher rates growth than we had anticipated, uh, offset a wee bit by the trans waste dividend being less than budgeted, um, and also some cost things within payroll and maintenance where the um, sort of payroll costs uh, mainly around some vacancies and the timing of the um, budgeted increases have not been um, applied yet, but also in the maintenance costs, just the timing of, of some of those payments. So all those things together are saying, um, although we had a, a surplus, um, we're expecting a, a forecasted surplus of about 0.7 um, at the end of the year. But as others have said pr prior to me, it's um, early in the year yet. Uh, so we'll just keep monitoring that. But there's been nothing um, big that's pumped up, that's jumped up. And in saying that, um, because of everything that's going through, uh, significant work in the LTP that you'll be aware of and earliness uh, we haven't gone to into a deep dive into the forecast at this point um, that that'll that'll step up now as, as, as the years progressing but just looking for um, larger items that are out and so yeah that's where we've we've found uh, so looking at the at the capital program um, just a, a summary um, and Andrew will cover that more in more detail following me uh, we've got um, so far for the year to date, uh, 65.8 million against a budget of 115. So that's um, slightly behind where we anticipated so in both the Kaha and uh, the core program. Uh, we're um, anticipating, um, well the forecast is 656 million against a budget of 692. And um, so a variance of about $35 million at year end at this point, with most of that likely to be requested to be carried forward. but. Um, yeah, we'll be keeping a close eye on that and, and report in more detail as we go through. In the Treasury space, um, all, all the um, covenants are, are in, in, in place. There's, there's nothing to uh, report untoward there. And uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it, Mr Chair. Happy to take any questions. Hey, thank you very much for that. Um, I mean, it's, it's really useful. And like you say, it's sort of early on in the year, isn't it? So mm. um, we'll expect these things to change, but it's always good to see positive results to start with. Uh, Tim and then Yanni. Yeah, um, with regards to the um, trans waste um, lower dividend, is that going to be a trend? Do you th is there any forecasting there? That because I mean it's it was would have been fantastic to have everything positive, and but unfortunately it's not. So is it early in the year? So uh, yeah, through you, Mr. Chair. Yes, yeah, so uh, I guess we were a little surprised by that. Uh, we thought it would have got an earlier notification, so I just got to follow up on that. Um, as, as, as to why, what's that, why that has occurred, yeah, but yeah. I can come back and re yeah. advise on that. Uh, we, we've not been advised of, of anything else in the other space that that would be the case. Yeah. Okay, but it would be good if we just, just keep an eye on that, I suppose. Correct. Yeah. Thank you, cheers. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, <clears throat> thank, thank you for the report. Uh, just two questions from me. Um, the delayed Takaha Crown revenues of 2.6 million compared to 15.8 million budgeted. Do we know why that's happened, and what are we doing to follow that up? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, it, it's it's just a timing variance. So it'll be timing of putting submitting the receipts for the work done and getting those funds through. So like we don't get the money up front; we do the work and then get the claims. There's always a bit of a delay. Um, I could find out exactly when the funds have come in. Yeah, I, I, I don't, don't see it as being a concern. Right. Whatsoever. I just thought because Takaha was well ahead of schedule, so we had to wait for it to pay because we'd used the Crown money. So that's why I guess I was surprised that this was in here. Um, the second question that caught, uh, item that caught my attention was 6.5.2 um, around the lower reserve drawdowns due to DCs not having been drawn for qualifying expenditure due to a review of qualifying project and catchments occurring. Do, do we have any visibility of that, or do we? Can we get a sense of the scale of that issue? Uh, going through you, Mr. Chair. 
you know, it's a, it's a great question and th thanks for it. So um, development contributions fund growth projects. And so the, the mechanism for identifying those growth projects is being reviewed. That's what, what that says. So we can only draw, so the development contributions come in, they effectively sit in, a, in an account and we draw in the balance sheet and we draw those down as the work's done. So we, we're just reviewing that. All that report is saying there, or that item within the report saying is that the, the level of drawdown has, was, was less. So therefore that indicates perhaps the, the work uh, in the development or in the growth categorization space wasn't as high as we anticipated. But there's, there's a, I can tell you that there's a significant amount of work going through. We, we can get a specific answer, but I suspect Dawn I was chatting about it, it'll be also related to the um, ECAM order issue that Phil's been talking about. Which we slide up a lot of that development. Probably, as well. although I guess I guess the concern is that we deferred a whole bunch of um, development contribution funded projects in our annual plan. So I'm kind of interested in that relationship, and also, you know, again, this comes back to the whole question around catchments. For those of us who have got areas of having significant growth, we're, we're in a chicken and egg. We can't get projects on budget because there's no funding, mm. but then we can't get TCs because there's no projects on budget. Yeah. So we're just going around in circles. So yeah, I'd really like to understand a little bit more about oh, what's that, been that's done in that space. Because we'll, we'll I thought we'd, as a council, set up smaller catchments to be more deliberate around projects yeah. and had a bunch of projects. Yeah, let, let, yeah. okay. So we'll do a written response for you, um, for all members, Councillor Johansson, but I think it's maybe not as complicated as has been described. Great. Any other questions for us all? No? Okay. Anyone? No one online? No? Nope. Um, I'm happy to move this. Mel's happy to second it. Any discussion? All in favour? Against? That's carried. Great. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you. That's brilliant. Okay, uh, Andrew and the team, do you want to come on up and talk us through your new capital project?